Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to yet another episode of Take Two on Soundstage. My name is Jay Lee, and I am your host for the Take Two series on Soundstage. Now, if you're new here and you're wondering what is Take Two, Take Two is where I take a second look, I give a second life to a product that has already been reviewed by a Soundstage reviewer. And you can read a full review on the Rotel A11 tribute series that we have here today on soundstageaccess.com. It was written by Denise on April 1st, 2021. And if you can't find it on the website, we always have a link in the description below so you can easily click on it. We have also measured this you know, fully, so you can take a look at that as well if you want to know more about the measurements of the Rotel A11. Now, in this video, I'm going to be telling you more about my experiences as the end user who you know, basically had some time with it. And I think with this one, I had about two, two weeks um, and you know, I had it with many speakers in that time from sensitive to not so sensitive speakers. So I'll tell you more about my experiences with this integrated amplifier. But for the nitty gritty stuff, please go ahead and read the written review. Now, the Rotel A11, as you may know, is a tribute to Ken Ishiwata, a name that is very familiar in the audio industry and rather a legend who has been with Marantz for, I think something like over 40 years. And he has been you know, a great influence in the hi-fi industry to say the least. So this is a tribute to him. And <laughs> I have to say it is a very, very affordable piece considering the performance of this integrated amplifier. I really liked it. Now, this is about 800 USD. So when you factor in that you have essentially a DAC but not a fully functional DAC, and we'll talk more about that later. However, we you know, essentially have a DAC in here, and it's a pre-amplifier and an amplifier. It also has a phono stage. So whether it be that you want to go digital or analog turntables, all you have to do is get a separate turntable or a separate streamer with a DAC built in. And you may be asking, well, why would I get a streamer with a separate DAC? Doesn't the Rotel A11 already have a DAC? And yes, it does in a way, but it is only accessed by Bluetooth. So there's no digital inputs or outputs on this unit, which kind of is weird on this unit. It's kind of unique. Um, but for the purpose of you know, the DAC inside this unit, it is only accessed by Bluetooth, aptX, so you can stream it through Bluetooth into the device, but there's no other connections available to be used any other way. So if you want to do high quality streaming or, uh, or such, then you have to have a separate streamer and a DAC, unfortunately. Now, other than that, that's probably my only main complaint. You know, I would have loved to see some, maybe a USB optical, coax, you know, one of those at least, but we don't have that here. Now, other than that, it is also a speaker A and speaker B. You know, something that you kind of don't see anymore these days with integrated amplifiers or, or amplifiers, but something that you've seen, you know, maybe in the 90s, you know, you've seen some vintage pieces, for example, like the Sensui or Pioneer integrated amplifiers used to have speaker A, speaker B. And this is a welcomed addition because then you can run two separate you know, speakers if you really wanted to. Now, with that being said, let's dive into some of the settings this unit has. Now, it does have tone control so that you can adjust um, the treble and the bass. However, I didn't really touch it because it really didn't need to be touched. I liked the way the Rotel A11 sounded just right out of the box. Now, however, it does come with presets that allow you to change a little bit of the sound signature. Now, I found both of these settings, both of them, to be a little bit more boosted in the bass region and a little bit more sparkly on the top end and extended. However, it wasn't my taste in, in what I liked because the mid, mid section, the mid range, which I love the most, uh, found to be a little bit more recessed than I would appreciate. So for example, vocals would sound a little bit farther back and bass would take over and the treble would be more apparent. 
Yes, it sounds more impressive right off the bat with more bass authority and more spark on the top end, more detailed. However, with the overall music presentation and the musicality, I much prefer the standard A11 sound without any of the presets. So then what does the A11 sound like without any of the presets? Well, the A11 is a very, very good integrated amplifier for $800. It has good amount of bass authority, but doesn't extend down as low as some of the higher offerings, that's for sure. However, the bass hits hard and it hits home. It is extremely uh, quick to react and it is extremely punchy. And that is a quality that is quite often missing in the integrated amplifier budget category. And that is something that makes the Rotel A11 unique in my opinion. The midsection is also very interesting. The midsection doesn't have any much coloration that I can pick out, but also it is a little bit, a little bit on the warmer side of the neutral. I don't find it to be clinical nor too warm, but just about the right warmth and gut to the sound to really bring those vocals out and those micro details out and make it clean as possible without any added coloration or noticeable uh, you know, extra strain on the vocal regions that make a show to the ears. So overall, the midsection is easy going yet easy to uh, absorb, which allows me to focus on the little details more and the overall musicality rather than, you know, being unpleasantly bothered with the shouting of the midsection. So there's no shouting or shoutiness in the midsection that as far as I can tell in the midsection and there's not much grain to be found in the midsection as well, which is impressive again for $800 price point. Now keep in mind that I have paired the A11 with multiple different speakers from sensitive to not so sensitive speakers. And being a 50 watt amplifier into 8 ohms, I have to say that it cannot drive the most insensitive speakers. For example, it, I don't believe it is a very good match with the KEF LS50 Meta, for example. It doesn't drive it fully. Yes, it, it is able to project sound, but I just don't think the synergy is there. I believe the KEF LS50 Meta and speakers that are a little bit less sensitive that requires a little bit more power will be far better with an amplifier that has more power and drive. Now that's not to say that the Rotel A11 doesn't have any drive. It does have tremendous drive and bass authority when it comes to mid to sensitive speakers. Just not the extreme other end, the less sensitive speakers, so to speak. Now when it comes to the high frequency on the Rotel A11, it has two qualities that I really like about it. It is detailed and clean sounding. However, it is not bright or shrill or too forward sounding. In fact, it can be easily mistaken for a warm sounding unit overall if it's paired up with a warm sounding speaker like the Bocard S400 or the Altair speakers. Now, however, this is not a warm sounding unit overall. I found it to be quite neutral. However, the high frequency again is rather speaker dependent in that if the speaker has that kind of high frequency projection, then it doesn't necessarily boost it or necessarily recess it but it just gives it as it is. So I guess in a way, the high frequency is rather neutral. However, I do have to say that it is a very detailed high frequency. It things float in the air very well with micro details that I love very much. Now, one thing that I really do again appreciate about the high frequency and the upper mid range on the Rotel is that on busy, on busy uh, classical tracks or tracks in general with you know a lot going on, it is able to really separate and declutter, in a way, the music very, very well. So for those of you that likes to hear music individual components instead of as a whole, and those that find that their music seems to be always cluttered and don't like that, then this is a good choice. Now, I do have to say that the soundstage, however, isn't the largest when it comes to the Rotel A11. It is rather just good enough. It is not like a tube amplifier or even to solid state amplifier standards. It is not the widest or the deepest sounding uh, integrated amplifier. However, it gives you just enough and the soundstage is pulled back just a little bit to give you that breathing room, which gives you a nice sense of soundstage that is adequate. Not too large, not too big, but adequate. 
One thing that this integrated amplifier does lack in my opinion for being a budget amplifier is that there is not much layering going on. It's more of a 2D sound when it comes to the depth uh, section instead of a more of a 3D sound. So that is something that you have to keep in mind when you are looking at this unit. But again, for $800, I had a phenomenal time with this integrated amplifier. Personally speaking, the Rotel A11 really made my foot tap and it was not a boring sound, but a very intriguing and engaging sound that I really liked with certain speakers like the Tecton 2-10s or the Triangles or the Cafelos 50 Metas or virtually all the speakers that I have tried with because knowing that this is a $800 integrated amplifier, it just performs way above its price point and just does extremely well on certain things that I can really appreciate. So that's pretty much it for me. Thank you for watching. If this video was helpful to you, please click that thumbs up button and make sure to subscribe for more Take Two series. Until next time, take care.